Evaluation of a theory-based intervention aimed at improving coaches' recommendations on sports nutrition to their athletes is a research study that I have reviewed. My name is Jessica Merkin, and I'm a dietetic intern at the University of St. Joseph Dietetic Program. Please stay tuned as I walk you through the research study. This study had two purposes to evaluate how well a theory of planned behavior, also known as TPB, based intervention works in combination with an algorithm to help provide coaches with proper sports nutrition recommendations to their young student athletes. Secondly, it was to increase the coach's knowledge of sports nutrition. The researchers wanted to determine if a decision-making algorithm which provides sports nutrition recommendations specific to the coach's sports, improve the coach's nutrition knowledge retention while increasing the number and accuracy of nutrition recommendations they make to their student athletes better than just having a theory-based intervention, which I will describe in a couple of slides. The methods. Participants, in order to be included in the study, had to be coaches of athletes ages 12 to 17 and had to work with those athletes the entire length of the study. They were recruited by email and phone in local sports communities and were randomly placed in the comparison or intervention group. Initially, there were 41 participants, but only 39 actual participants in the end. Coaches had all levels of sports, certifications, and education. This table breaks down the coaches into male, female, their level of education, their certifications, and the level that they compete at. The theory-based intervention was created and put into action by a registered dietitian. Common to both groups, a questionnaire was given out at the start on site. Following, there were two 90-minute interactive meetings with the registered dietitian within two weeks where they received current recommendations for sports nutrition and healthy eating before, during, and after training or competitions. Then they were given a one-week post-intervention along with a two-month follow-up. They were also given strategies for behavior change to resistance of social pressure and persuasive communication. A recommendation diary was also asked to be kept in order to count the number of recommendations and to calculate their accuracy. The comparison group just received the information on the previous slide. However, the intervention group received an algorithm which was evidence-based after the second 90-minute session concluded in hopes to improve those coaches' decision-making regarding recommendations to their student-athletes. Algorithms for sports nutrition were given to each coach, which they only got one based on their specific sport. They were given food sources, example meals, and best choices for their student-athletes depending on their specific scenarios such as recovery snacks, before, during, after training or competition for specific foods like carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, hydration. As a reinforcement, case studies helped coaches understand the algorithm and which recommendations were proper to use in the specific condition that they were in. Nutrition measurement was done through questionnaire containing 69 questions, true, false, and multiple choice. Questions were broken down into categories such as carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, supplement use, timing, and hydration. There was a don't know answer to minimize guessing. As for behavior measurement, over the two month follow up period, the coaches were keeping a diary with the recommendations they made. These recommendations had to be specific as to type of recommendation, the time in which they recommended it, whether during, before, or after competition or training, and the context. Two registered dietitians 
evaluated the accuracy and number of recommendations. If there was a disagreement, a third registered dietitian would come in with their opinion. They would also break down the recommendations in the diary into subcategories of nutrients. The intention measurement was through the TPB questionnaire to evaluate the coach's intentions to recommend three things. One, increasing carbohydrates to improve sports performance. Two, increasing protein to promote muscle gain. And three, increase hydration to improve sports performance. There were several means of data analysis within this research study. Two tests compared the baselines of the comparison and intervention groups. Mixed models look to assess the changes in nutrition knowledge and intention to recommend the three nutritional practices between the two groups and over time. The three nutritional practices to promote was to increase carbohydrate use, protein, and hydration. The general linear model analysis identified differences between the two groups in the number and accuracy of recommendations provided to athletes during the two-month post-intervention period. In general, can the methodology answer the question? The answer to that is yes. The methods used for the intervention and measurements can answer this question. The results of the nutrition knowledge part of the study can be seen in the table below. Both groups, comparison and intervention groups, increased knowledge. The intervention group, however, maintained the knowledge at a greater extent than the comparison group. In the table below, the darker color is the intervention group, and you can see that they plateaued and stayed the same with retaining information from the post-intervention to follow-up, whereas the comparison group, which is the lighter color, from the post-intervention to follow-up decreased. So they didn't retain that same knowledge. As for the intention results, both groups intended to increase carbohydrate recommendations, but neither group maintained those intentions. For protein, both groups intended to decrease those recommendations, but there wasn't enough significant data. As for hydration, recommendations were maintained in both groups from baseline to post-intervention. The outcomes of the behavior section of the study is shown in the table below. As you can see, the intervention group had more recommendations in carbohydrate and hydration than the comparison group. The intervention group can be seen as the black color, whereas the comparison group, the gray. Going vertical is the number of recommendations made for sports nutrition, carbohydrates, proteins, carbohydrates and proteins, and hydration. The intervention group also had higher accuracy than the comparison group. As you can see though, the protein recommendations were very insignificant compared to the other recommendations. Based on the results just described, it can be seen that better nutrition knowledge retention occurs with the added intervention group along with more accurate recommendations, more recommendations were made, and higher intentions to recommend carbohydrates. The research study was reliable because it was peer-reviewed and published. It was actually found in the Eat Right journal recently. We can see that the added algorithm did make a difference. So it is worth thinking about how this article can be applied to practice. Maybe we implement to more coaches, present outcomes to these coaches and associations, and configure other algorithms for other sports that were not included in this specific research study. In 2013, when the research study was done, the nutrition education provided were based off of the dietary recommendations at that time for carbohydrates, protein, and hydration. Let's not forget that there are limitations to every research study. 
The author did mention that there was no pre-intervention measure of behavior or control group, a small number of subjects used, as I said, only 39 ended up completing the entire research study. The information collected did not determine how the intervention affected behavior. There could have been more in-depth questions in the questionnaire. And it's unclear if coaches used outside sources for the one-week follow-up and two-month follow-up questionnaires. We could have recruited in other communities for a larger base study had all the questionnaires completed at the research site instead of the last two being off-site. And those questions, as I said, could have asked some more deeper questions. There were no noted conflicts of interest or bias provided from the author. This article was worth publishing. Many coaches have limited nutrition knowledge and strategies to apply accurate information to student-athletes. This article shows a need for education materials and shows us insight of what needs to be done in the future to provide students with accurate, effective recommendations to keep them healthy before, during, and after performances. As for the future, it would be important to repeat the study, provide more algorithms for other sports, and maybe do even one-year follow-up interviews with the coaches in the original study to see if they have continued to maintain those recommendations, retention of knowledge. Thank you for listening. Below is the citation of the published article.